You can simulate depth of field in 3ds Max and Viz. This is something that professional photographers do to focus interest on a specific region of an image. For example, in this model, I'd like to focus the interest on this clock tower. And if I do a test render, you'll see that everything is in sharp focus by default. I'd like to blur areas that get further away from that clock tower so that your eye will naturally travel to the clock tower and focus on it because it will be the only thing that's really in sharp focus. To simulate this we make adjustments to the camera and the easiest way to do this is to create a target camera so I'm going to change the type of this camera to target and then I'd like to select the target an easy way to do that is to right click in the camera viewport and select the target then I'll go over here into this viewport and move the target onto the tower because that's what I want to focus on I don't actually want to look directly at the tower but I want this focal plane to be on the tower so I can move this over. I'd like the composition to be more centered on the courtyard but I want this plane to be the plane that's in focus. Then I'll right click on this viewport to activate it. I'd like to select the camera again in order to modify it over here. Then I'll scroll down and select depth of field. It's already selected here, but if you're using the mental ray renderer, you would select this version. In mental ray, depth of field has its own rollout down here, and you just set the f-stop just like you would in the real world if you were using a camera. With the scan line renderer, there are more parameters to set. And you go down here and you have these parameters that control the blurring that will occur with this effect. I'll leave the default set at 12 passes and this means that 12 separate images will be rendered and this frame only took two seconds so it won't take very long but you can imagine if this image took 10 minutes to render then it would take me like two hours to render this effect. So it can be really computationally expensive to do this and there are ways to do this in Photoshop much quicker but that sort of goes beyond the scope of what I'm teaching you here. Now right down here you can set the amount of blur with the sample radius and it's just one inch by default. I'm gonna boost that up to one foot to really accentuate this effect. And then I'll go ahead and click render and we'll see it didn't happen. I forgot one step and that is up here I need to enable the multipass effect. Then I'll go ahead and render and this time you'll see the rendering come in in stages. Now each one of those renderings is being computed and when it's done it's going to composite them together to create the depth of field effect. Where the camera target is it should be in, in sharp focus. So I, I'm expecting the tower to look in sharp focus, which it is, and then objects that recede from that start to become more and more blurred. This causes you, your eye, to subconsciously jump to the tower and focus on it. The sample bias parameter right here will skew where the blurring is occurring. If you increase this value, say to 0.9, then more blurring will occur in the distance, and this will maximize this effect. So I'll clone the window so that we can make a comparison, and I'll go ahead and render it again. So this time I'm expecting the rendering to be magnified so that objects in the foreground will be more blurry as compared with the initial rendering. But as you can see, 
all the each change that you make here is going to take a lot of rendering time. So it's good to experiment with this in a simple scene such as this one before you go on to trying to render this multipass effect in a complex project. Now look down here, this is very blurry and this area isn't quite as blurry and that's the effect of the sample bias parameter.